Sound Reations will save your life when you're working with external instruments or effect pedals. Sound Reations were originally designed for switching articulations and sounds in virtual instruments and sample libraries. If you want a string patch to switch between staccato and tremolo, or a guitar to play bendings or harmonics, every time an instrument has different articulations that can be changed, Sound Reations are a great way to easily select these articulations during playback. But in fact, Sound Reations are so flexible that they can be used for so much more than that. For example, a great use case is hardware synthesizers or samplers that have many presets, or guitar effect pedals. All of these devices usually respond to program changes. These are specific MIDI commands that tell the instrument to switch to a different preset. Without Sound Reations, you would need to open an automation lane, add a new automation, and select program change. And then you would add a new automation point wherever you want to go to another preset. And here you have to enter the number of the preset you want to select. And that's where this method can get a little complicated and tedious. Let's take my Yamaha MoXF keyboard workstation as an example. Here I can just select the preset I want from a list. I see all the names and I just pick the one I want. In Studio One, you have to type in a number because Studio One obviously does not know all the presets and their names. But we can change that and create a list of all the presets in our workstation and then just select them from a list without having to mess around with the program numbers. And that's where sound reactions come into play. Because each sound reaction can have a name and can send different types of MIDI events, including program changes and bank changes. And that's exactly what we need here. Let me show you what this looks like when I load a sound reaction map for the Yamaha keyboard. I go to the Sound Reactions tab, click on the wrench, select the Yamaha Mo XF, and here are all the presets and every element here has already the right data to send the program change. Here are the bank numbers and here's the number of the preset. Of course, this list has to be created first. We will get to that in a second. But now I can just use the paint tool and add a new sound reaction change. And as you can see, we have the different folders with the different banks and I just select the preset I want. Let's add two more preset changes. Let's select this one and another one and maybe this one. And when I hit play, you can see that the preset changes here on the list, but more importantly, the keyboard changes the presets. Or if you say you want to search for a certain preset and you know it was something with flute, then you can just use the find and apply variation command. I have it here in my custom toolbar, but you can also find it in the keyboard shortcuts. And I can now enter flute and just use the arrow keys to find the one I was looking for. Ah, here it is. Now it's changed in the keyboard. And if you want to add it to the event, just click the plus button and here it is. Or another option is to open up the sound reaction editor. And here we have a search field and we can type in flute and now browse through the different flute patches. Okay, that's great. But how do we get these lists in the first place? There are several ways. You can, of course, create a sound reaction map from scratch. Let's click Action and remove all. And now we have a new empty list. And if you have a synthesizer where you have created your own presets and saved them as user presets, then you'll have to add them to the sound reactions map manually because there's no automated way, at least none that works for all hardware devices. Creating a map from scratch is actually very easy. And I have some videos about that on my channel, but just to show it quickly, you can click on new variation, then say piano, and then you have to change the activation sequence. Here we don't need node on, node off, but we choose program change. And here we already have program one, our first preset. 
And to create the variations for the other presets, I can just go ahead and again click on New Variation. The program numbers are already incremented, Studio One does this automatically for us, so we don't need to change them. But of course, we do need to enter the names. So I double click on the item and then I can use the arrow keys to go to the next one and type in the names. And that's what's really great about this editor. It's quick and easy to type in new variations and it just works. If your program is in a different bank in your device, then instead of the simple program change, you can also use bank change. And here we have to enter the MSB and the LSB value, which you have to look up in the manual of your keyboard or sound module. And then let's add another program change. That's how you create a new sound creation map. Okay, so this is a Yamaha Motive keyboard and it has over 1000 factory patches. So they are probably already maps you can find online. The easiest way is to look on Prisonus Exchange. Prisonus Exchange is a free database with free macros and patterns and presets and also the key switches folder. And the key switches folder is where we find sound reactions. For example, here's a map for the Yamaha TG500. Maybe search for Yamaha and see what we have. Okay, there are no preset maps for my Yamaha keyboard. So here's another tool and that's Studio One Toolbox. But before we continue with Studio One Toolbox, remember, if you enjoyed this video and you want more secret tips and tricks for Studio One, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, click the bell so you don't miss any videos in the future. Okay, here is studio1toolbox.com. This is my online platform for Studio One users with additional tools like the Sound Reaction Converter that can take your Cubase expression maps or Cubase patch scripts or also Cakewalk instrument definitions. These are all very popular file formats for patch maps of hardware synthesizers. And you can find them all over the internet. There are so many resources. For example, let's type in Cubase patch script Yamaha Motive and you will get lots of resources to download these patch scripts or instrument definitions. Now here's the trick. With the sound reaction converter on my website, you can just import a patch script and it will read all the different data and try to convert it to the Studio One format and you will instantly get the sound reaction file for download. Now let's just drag that file into the Studio One editor and you have the preset list here. To store this list, you need to go to the menu and say store preset. You can choose a folder if you want, but you don't have to and just click OK. And now it appears here in the list and you can select it anytime later when you work with this instrument. I'm sure I'll expand these tools at some point and maybe even create a dedicated online sound reaction editor. But for now, you can just convert Cakewalk or Cubase files and then just use them as sound reactions in Studio One. That's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video.